All right, right now, man. So uh, we gonna uh, see you fall up in here with us, man. So we all the way live right now. Man, on everything, yeah, man. Okay, going. Yeah, okay. for that part two. Hell yeah, yeah. Well, everything good with you for the day? Man, just working, staying out the way, man. No call the kids, no never answer the phone. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Say they only hit us when they need us. Yeah, when they need some money for some shoes, some pants or something, they hit me up. I call them to see what they're doing all day. Exactly. You know, but, you know, a lot of us are growing up, you know, pops, you know, parents drop drugs and people live with their grandma. So we didn't take the exception to being parents, and they don't really understand that. They have to go that. Exactly, man. Uh, people tapping up in here, man. As soon as, as soon as we get like uh, ten people strong, man, we gonna start on up, man. You know what I'm okay. saying? Get five more people up in here, man. We start on up. We we get us an audience going, man. We, we seven strong right now. Eight strong. And I, and I appreciate you bringing that history from our era, from that half side too, homie, on everything. We had eight people now. We need two more people, man. We're going to get started. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. But you over here banging. Uh, that's that intro. That's that 89 on up uh, intro. Uh, okay, okay. You okay, know, that, that shit was hot. Yeah, I yeah. Heard fire like that. I'm like, man, what happened to the little nigga? Like, he just went back to him when he was 17 or something. On the real. He he, he went in on that one, homie, on everything. That's classic, bro. That's yeah, classic. That's yeah. Classic. He brought some straight heat to the uh to the channel with that intro, homie, on everything. Yeah, yeah. We, we ate strong. So we need two more people, man. I know we I know we can pull two more people up in here, man. Be ten strong up in here, man. Don't come, don't come. Hey, what you what you thought about the part one, man? You thought it was pretty good? Yeah, man, I, I thought it was pretty good, you know. Yeah, yeah. Of, you know, it was a lot of history, you know, it was a lot of time you can't rush it, a lot of things in the hour, but I think you covered so much in the hour, it was amazing. Oh, man. Right. Yeah. It was really amazing. Man. It was on a professional level where you laid everything out the questions and the way you put things in it. You know, the, um, you know, just the whole, the whole get down, man. So, right. You know, um, I, I saw your video on, um, man, I saw, um, what was that you did recently? I watched the whole thing. Uh, that was it TV? Street TV, yeah, yeah. I watched Right. And I was like, oh, boy, right there, you know right, what I mean? Right, hell you know, yeah. It's crazy because, you know, when somebody see you, they don't really know you. They, they're like, oh, that's, that's, that's dope, man, you know, that's dope, you know. But, you know, like, I do like me, they really know you. It's like, right. man, I'm proud of this dude. Right, this right. Dude. Yeah, yeah, we be really happy for each I, other, I, homie, on everything. I, I, I seen him from when he was pushing, pushing NHP 100%, 100 where he's still pushing, but in a positive level. Right. And that's what we doing, homie, giving this, giving our history, because we basically the unsung history of our generation. You know, a lot of the young homies, they might have got, few of them might have got a chance to run with us, but a lot of us, a lot of them that came on board, they didn't get a chance to run with us, homie, and they wonder why we carry ourselves a certain type of way, because, homie, we, you know, we had to carry the torch for our turf to a whole different level at our time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to read a comment or two before we go into the interview. Uh, somebody said, G half, keep, you keep it G with the homies from Al Pyro. It's Pyro love, homie. Uh, the loved one, Ace Deuce, much love and respect from your skyline folks in Dago, homie, big tone. Uh, salute to the fam man in the chat all the time. Mr. 512, what it do? Make sure y'all hit the likes, man, on everything, man. Hit them likes and subscribe. Uh, tonight, uh, we back on 89 on up. And, uh, 
we got the homeboy, historical homeboy from, you know what I'm saying, our age group generation bracket back with part two of the Inglewood Avenue Power Rules. Uh, Ace Deuce, you want to reintroduce yourself again for those that didn't catch you yesterday? What's going on, fam? This Ace Deuce. I'm fucking free having the power room. Thank you, Okay. Uh, through the first, through the first interview, we had, uh, you know, got familiar with your background, with your schooling, with the, you know what I'm saying, the state title, with the Morningside. Uh, high school and all that, homie, getting familiar with that. Now we want to roll in to, to the, into the turf on a lot of homies, monumental homies over there. Uh, but before I dive into the, the monumental homeboys, uh, a lot of people want to know what was y'all Paru love like and Paru ties with, with Compton Paru's. Did the homies, what homage did the homies pay with the Compton Power Rules, homie, a lot of people want to ask that. Well, um, we had um, our um, party, the strongest um, uh, Power Rules from Compton that we've uh, fucked with is it, it, the Mob Power Rules. The, the, you know, the homie um, Tank, the homie Swoop, you know what I mean? Right. I'm with them for a hot second, you know, we fuck with the Ludus, you know, right. the Ludus like that. Like the start of the, of the road, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Plants over there, so you always got to tap in over there. So you know, you had a chance when Bear Run was on um, Death Row. We signed with Death Row, and we used to go over to the um, Lutus and hang with the Lutus and shit, and fuck with them and shit. You know what I mean? And um, we got homies from West Side Power Road. You know what I mean? Over in the West Side, we we were on fuck with. You know what I mean? On a music level, and, and you know the homie Wacko and shit. He went to Morningside with us, and he went to Monroe. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Right. So homies had, homies did have a good root tie throughout our history with different homies from Paul Rue out to Compton. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Uh, somebody wanted to know about the relationship with the Inglewood neighborhood Paul Rules and the Avenue Paul Rules. Uh, can you recall from 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 back then? how our history was, just to give people a little brief rundown on it. All oh, right, shit, so, you know, when I was coming up, you know, you know, the, like I said, the, you know, it's all, you know, how you got the face of the hood, you know, right now, since internet, it, you know, you got Nipsey, you the face of the hood, but then you got a, a hundred other dudes, you know, um, Peter Wack and Big Jew and all these dudes, that was really the real niggas that put 60, you know, so when I was, you know, growing up and playing ball at Rogers, when I came to NHP, I saw you, um, Big Slim, Dulo, um, Bugsy, um, um, Shan Rock, um, Fats. You know, y'all was always at Rogers Park, always doing y'all thing. You know, always pushing y'all lines. And, and for avenues, we went on y'all level. We went on Mafia's level. You know, niggas was Inglewood, we were certified, but, you know, we didn't have that, uh, you know, we went deep like y'all. We went deep like the families. We went you know, put in work, and, you know, yeah, you know, we were we weren't a, a full hood, but we was a hood where it was more hustling. Yeah, you, you know, the females playing ball. You know, the homies we get to the, with the rips. You know, we always got to the rips, but it was just we was wasn't really known. You know, we didn't have that image. You know what I mean? So right. when I, um when it came to um, us pushing power rules to NSPs from Taco relationship and our relationship with Shorty. You know what I mean? And Pop, going up on that side of town, um, they kind of had our back in situation. So when we was into it with the Mafia, I don't know if you remember, there was a football game, Morningside versus Inglewood up at Signal Field. So we went up to, you know, the Mafia was supposed to know Russ, you know, most of the you know, they came to the, the whole game party, about it. I think it was about 80 of them, had to be 80 of them. I'm going to tell you why, because you know how on the, I don't know what street it is. Closer to the um, pan booth is Inglewood home section. Mm -hmm. And on the other side is visitors. So we was going to the Inglewood side thinking that's the Inglewood side. But we went on knowing Morningside had the home, the, you know what I mean, the, 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 um, like the home advantage for the game. So we going to the game, boom, me, Big Ass, g um, about a bit, Big Sick, Little Sick, a couple of, it was probably about 18 of us, 
went up in there. Man, we didn't get it past the phone booth. And I seen the whole bitches just come down. Everybody putting their, you know, their little brownie gloves on. You know what I mean? Their brown gloves on. But, but you know what I mean? I'm like, wow. You know what I mean? Right. So we backed up. Because it was just too many of them. It was, it was only about 20 of them. It was just too many. So we backing up. Coming out the phone, off the booth. Y'all you know, look to the left. Blood taco, all y'all blood coming. You know what I mean? The homie, um, the homie, um, um, killer whack. You know what I mean? Everybody, right. everybody cut the bus. Everybody, paru, paru. That was Y'all fell to us. Boom, we went across the street. Mafia's on one side. Blood, the police was in, in, in the middle. Had the whole shit talking. And we were just going back and forth talking. I don't know if you remember that, huh? Right. I think I probably was locked up with something, but I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. So the NHP had our back and saved us, man. So... I was always type of dude in Inglewood, you know. I really didn't go to school with the families, so I didn't really hang with the families like that. You know, I went to school with the center parks. I fucked with them, and I fucked with the NHPs, and that was like my one-two in Inglewood. Either I'm in the centers, or I'm in the abs, or I'm in the NHPs. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, that's how it was, homie. And I remember, you know, in the, in, in kind of like in the mid-'90s, you know, we was, we was running super tight, man, when, you know, Dulo was alive, and... You know, sick was was running with us, and we was running back and forth, and it was real long. And you know, our our tide and bond just got even tighter then. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to fall into a a couple homies that who who was homies that that kept AF together out our generation. Like you know, a lot of hoods got the homies that keep the glue going, keep us stuck together. Could you name a couple homies from AF that had an impactful, you know, uh, relationship with the homies that kept us tight over there in the AFs? Well, you know, Big S, you know, Free Big S, you know what I mean? But Big S, you know, shit, it was, it was our doulo over there. Right. right. You know what I mean? Right. Yes, you know, everybody know Big S was kind of wild dude, you know. And, you know, he, he be going for parole in, in 2029, so I'm just praying, that, you know, by that time, he'd be able to get out. You know what I mean? Right. Did any other homies uh, play a role like a big S over there in the turf? Oh, uh, man, the homie, the homie, you know, Ronnie Rowe. Right. You know, the homie Big Spook, even Lil Spook, the homie KP, you know, the um, big homie Richie Ridge, um, the um, big Lee, you know, Bobo, um, right. T-Bet, you, know, you know what I mean? We got, you know, you know, we had, you know how it is, BGs, but, you know, we were so tight, man, you know, Everybody inspired everybody to a, a, you know, I wanted to be my big homie. My big homie wanted to be their big homie. Like, how you want to, how you want to be your big homie and their right. big homie. You know what I mean? So right. We inspired, so we all kept the glue. But, like, if I could say some top dudes, it'd be like Spook, Ronnie Rowe, and Big Ass. Right. The, yeah. Right. You know? uh, I want, did the Avenue Power Rules ever have, like, any, like, Mexican breed or mixed breed type homies over there? Yeah, the first, the first, um, the first homie is Hispanic. The homie, um, huh? Big Lou. You know what I mean? Big Lou, he been around since probably the early eighties. You, know, you know what I mean? The hood started in nineteen seventy nine. The um, the, um, the, um, when the whole Inglewood was family, like if you go read the textbooks or you go Google Avenue Paru, it tell you Avenue Paru was the first hood to, to split from families. So my big homies, Lloyd and Floyd, they was kind of like the leaders and shit of family at that time. So they split away and made up Al Paru, their own little set, away from family. You know what I mean? Right, so that's kind of how the homies come evolve a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody asked about a baby sick, or I mean a little sick. What Was he a mixed breed homie? Sick. I was about to bring him up next. Little sick, yeah. you know. Little sick. That's he with the business, you know. What I mean? yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah. You know, smart man, family man, but he don't play that, you know. And um, you, you know how it is when you go to jail, and, you know, you get that yard, and the Hispanic is claiming a cripple, or white boys claim the cripple blood set. You know how that? I go into the politics and the shit might hit the fan on the yard and all the little bullshit though. But those are solid dudes, you know. That's only two, two dudes. That's you know, we got a new. New a uh, new guy from the hood that's Hispanic. Um, right. I, don't, I don't know his name because he's so old and I already be hanging with you know seventeen, six, fifteen year old. But got a Hispanic dude from the hood right now, probably about twenty right now. But I don't know his name. 
Right. Uh, somebody said uh, G half X H Deuce about these dudes named Arthur and Rodney. Yeah. So Biro was my crime. Biro was my first. Biro was my first crime, and then Ronnie Rule was my second crime. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Biro, he went to Washington High School. You know what I mean? And Baby Sick went to Washington High School. You know what I mean? So they knew all of them. As you no, know, I ain't gonna say this. You know. They knew where to go. Put it that way. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Hey, you know hey, I mean? is B is B real? That's the homie from back in the days. Yeah, yeah, Rodney. Okay. Yeah, spinning in the hood, spinning the hundred eight. That was the dark skinned homie from Al Pyro, was he? Said again. Was he dark skinned from Al Pyro? That that's B real, huh? Nah, B real is kind of brown skin. He had a little little nose. His baby mama was Shonda, and then big um. You know, Arthur is um, slow mo. He had a baby bar too. <laughs> right, right. You know, baby? But they all went to Washington though. Slow mo, be real, and baby sick. Right. You know what I mean? They all went to Washington. So they knew all the Wayne Levis. They knew all the hard times. They knew all the Crips. So that was kind of the, the guy for a second, you know. And be real was doing this thing. He ended up going to the Juvenile Hall for, um, you know, um, you know shooting, um, shooting somebody. When he got out, the, 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 you know, the day he got killed, we had went to go get some tattoo on the, you know, you remember that place on like 43rd and on, on like, I think the low bottoms over there. Right. They got the tattoo. It's like a pink house that had cartoons and shit on it. You know what I mean? I don't know if you remember that place, but <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, so we go over there and get tattooed that morning. Man, we in there, I'm getting AP on my chest. He got, he getting AP on his arms. The motherfucking Hoover's walking in. <laughs> like 10 of them. <laughs> but, we, but, but, you know, we was heated up, though. You know what I mean? Right. I ain't say nothing. We go to my house, right? So I'm putting some Vaseline on my shit. Be real, putting some Vaseline on. You know, on, on, if I need to go home and, you know, put some Vaseline, I need to go serve a couple of crackheads real quick. You know, four minutes later, nigga hear gunshots. Boom, kill my nigga. Come nigga in my house, my nigga. In the hood. Yeah. Yeah, I remember B real. That was like in the early nineties, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And baby oh. sick he ended up going to jail for this shit. Right. Be about twenty three years for that shit. Right, on the real, homie, cause uh I think I was in juvenile camp with the homie uh B real, dog. Yeah, that's my name. Yeah, solid homie too on everything, dog. Uh mm -hmm. uh, I got another homie, uh somebody was asking about Pac, homie. Say Pac was the expansion. So when we had got into the situation, I told you about that morning. So we got to the um, hookers, and it was a little bit of gunplay. JB um, Auntie Miss um, Lewis, she was a counselor at Morningside. So we woke up the next morning because it happened that week, and we woke we woke up morning going to Inglewood High School. Me, Sean D, Shorty, you know, uh, um, and JB. You know, we Morningside niggas. We go over there, so we ended up going over there. And GB and Shorty end up staying. Sean went back to Morningside, and then I was forced to go back because I played varsity basketball in the 10th grade. And the CIF rules was if you play basketball for one year in varsity, you got to sit out. So I didn't want to sit out my 10th grade, I mean, my 11th grade year, so I ended up going back to Morningside. But GB and Shorty, you know, put some cats on over here. We got, um, you know, Slim. I don't know if anybody knows CK Slim, Edward. Mm -hmm. We got Pop. You know what I mean? Then we got another homie. Um, Little, little, little slim. I mean, your little slim. He ended getting killed on over there on Queen Street in front of the building. Right. You know? Yeah. So we had some, you know, then um, KP and Capone went to Inglewood. Um, Big Smiley went to Inglewood. Um, little Smiley went to Inglewood. So we, you know, we shit, shit went over there and got about 10 good doors over there. <laughs> right, right, right. Expanded and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did the homies come about with? Separating it to like a uh, four, eight, nine, homie. So if you go down Crenshaw, the first like after you pass Century, you're gonna be a hundred and fourth in Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. So everybody on the hundred and fourth in Crenshaw up the street is from the phone. Then when you drive down to the next Crenshaw, you'll see Winchell's in the laundry mat. That's a hundred and eighth. So all the way from a hundred and eighth, when Ice Two was saying, um, I'm going up hundred hundred and eighth over the little dip. Right, you know what I mean? That's hundred and eighth right there. So. Go down to eight, boom, you're in the abs, then keep going down, you're in the one elevens, and keep going down, go to Washington High School, you know what I mean? So then, um, 
you keep going down Crenshaw, you get to 111, boom, you make the left 111 Crenshaw, you all through the nine. Mm-hmm. You know, the nine is close to Imperial and Crenshaw, that shot the center, you know, on the um, on the back side by the water gates right there on Imperial, you know what I mean, and on the back of the, of the 111, they're on that corner. What was the street there to get the most attention? from the Crips back in the days when we was buying it? Well, shit, it didn't matter. The Alpine rule was the Alpine rule to them. You know what I mean? That's like us going over there and, and looking for a 115 or a 111. Like, they're the same niggas. Right. So it was just through the, what, wherever, the, through the whole hood, wherever they wherever they caught something, that's where to go down at. Well, you know how it is. You yeah, know, vice know, versa. Uh, 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 you know, like, I uh, said, you know, uh, Running constant surveillance, you just roll down Crenshaw, see us serving. We serve on the one way, so you know, see yeah. us all day serving on up down the one ways, walking around. You know, and a lot of homies went to school with each other. You know, they get through the hood and they know which streets. Like you know, each like for instance, everybody know the sixties might be on Brianhurst, right? You know, or the Chris might be on. So everybody that was banging, we always knew which street you might be able to catch a nigga on. You know right, and that's how it was back then because it wasn't social media, but through people talking and homies field tripping back and forth from different communities, that's how we was able to find out who was where and, 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 and what was going on at them times. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, something else I want to uh, ask you, man. Somebody asked about an e-bail. Oh, yeah, the homie e-bailed it. Like you were saying, e-bailed one of those niggas that been in out there jail. Big ass nigga, 6'3". Like the fight, I got probably about 240, you know what I mean? Just let the niggas stay locked up. So, you know, every hood got niggas that on the street and the homies and certain niggas and the homies be doing time, you know? Mm -hmm. Four or five niggas doing 10, 15, you know? Uh, what about a, uh, a little Bobo then? Oh, uh, shit, little Bobo. Like I said, um, Big Bobo and Big Lee. That was our big homies growing up. Okay. Like me, these, and Shorty, Tick, GB. Like we looked up to uh, Rick Lee and, and, and uh, Bobo. And Bobo brother was big, was um was um Pagbone. So all three of them, we looked up to them. You know, that was like our our our, our gods. You know, right, right, that, right. That, that, you know what I mean? So. Uh, uh, did the homies have a park on that side of the hood that we resided at? Yeah, so we had a park that was on spinning called Century Park. It was kind of like Century Park and the, and the center parks. It was a school that was converted into a park. So um, when you hear when when you hear Red Rum or if you ever hear an Avenue song and they said that um, we would be um, meeting up on a Sunday, you know what I mean? Hey. On Park Wood Love and all that. Because yeah. every Sunday at Century Park, we all came up there. She was up here from 11 to about 6, 7 every day. And that was like our attraction. Like, you know how you got... Everybody got their parks. We got Darby Park, so majority of the kids come up here. They see the families they end up getting put on family, and all the kids that kind of grew up, you know, go to, um, you know, to, to the NH, you know, to Rogers Park, end up getting put on neighbors. So exactly, it was one of our main points to put niggas on in the hood to play ball, to socialize, and and, and, and to hang out. You know what I mean? So do so did uh, you know? I understand that we wind up having to, you know, switch parks due to safety of civilians and innocent bystanders because how we was doing it at our age uh, was Central Park, did you know, we wind up moving because it got kind of dangerous. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, man. We had some of the shoot-offs because, you know, Crips used to have field trips because we'd be in there about 70 deep. And uh, when you hit spinning, you can kind of look and see it far away. You know, you could be at far distance where you won't get shot at and you won't, you know, you can go through and kind of, you know, spy and see who we are and see lift the cars and all that shit that's parked. So we always have niggas in the cut by the gate. So when niggas come and, and, and pull up and look, niggas, you know, come out, you know, you know what I mean? Right, so it go down. <clears throat> right. Yeah, then, you know, one time, um, you get the water gates pulled up with two Ks. We just, we just walked in the park because we had to cut the park and, and um, cut the gate, you know, to get up in the park. And the, and the, and the wall was probably about, five feet, five and a half feet. So you kind of had to hop, you know, jump a little bit, get under the gate. So just as you come in the park, shit, the most of the water gets pulled with two tires, spray the whole park up. Wow. Probably a hundred shells, but no, how many died yet? Thank God. 
Right, right. But that's how dangerous Central Park had got for us. And, and that's just to let people know, because a lot of people, they kind of like, you know, haven't heard of the water gates, but a lot of the hoods, we got stories and we we is sharing them with history and you just sh shared the hell of a one that, you know, the homies was hell of a combative against them dudes to them dudes wind up coming back with a K, like you said, getting off a hundred round. Luckily, no one got hit. But them dudes was, you know, the homies was taking it to them and them dudes was trying to defend themselves, homie. And that's how it was back in them days, man. I I appreciate you uh, sending us on that one. So they talk about the part inside the hood, I think between the eight and the nine, I mean the school inside the uh, hood, um, between the eight or the nine or something like that. Can you tell us about that? Um, the, um, the, the, the part in my hood. Uh, I think it's the school we used to go up to and play basketball at with the homies. Yeah, that was, that was Century Park. So okay, then, right there inside the hood then, yeah. yeah so eventually, the, the neighbors in that neighborhood, you know, they paid a lot of money. To, you know, that, you know, the Avenues is a, is a nice neighborhood, but that's right. like a, you know, the, the houses over there is down to a million dollars, you know what I mean? So right. they were trying to get us out, so they ended up evicting the police every week they come up there, the Inglewoods come up there, 50 cars deep, wrap us up. Next week, 50 cars and dates. So eventually, we got basically ran out, out that park by the police. And we started hanging, you know, we always was at Rogers Park, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Playing ball, grew up here. That was a token in our life as far as on um, playing ball. Because Rogers right. was always the number one place to play ball in, in Southern California. And, and you went, if you want to get some real runners. So, you know, as we left park, you know, our bond with the NHP got stronger because that's where we started hanging out, you know. You know, fucking with the rules. You know yeah, what I mean? And, exactly. And, and getting that power rule on strong. You know what I mean? Right, right. And that's really how I got into just watching the homies run on the court because I knew y'all was out there chunking it up, giving it up on the court. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. On everything. Uh, who was some of the hand gods, homie? People ask about the hell of a squabblers. Who was some OG big homies that had hands? Before our time, before I asked you about our era, who were some big homies you had heard of having hands from Al Paru from back in the days? Shit, with well, the homie Ken Lucas, you know, I already had hands, you know, the homie D Train, you know, the um, shit, um, the homie Bang, the homie Big Bang, you know what I mean? Right. You know, yeah, you know we had some fighters, but like I said, my, my, my big homies is more level boys, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. In the 80s and growing up in that time with the Central Parks and the Avs and the Mafia, they went on the shit rule zone. There was more friends. There was more trying to get money. And right, right. That's how that's how the kind of the yeah, era was right. before it was. Right. But those was the OG squabblers, was OG Kent them and all that stuff. And that nigga DB. DB, and DB and, them, um, right. Right. Um, 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 you know, um, right, KB, right, KB, right. I mean, right. Them was our I mean, OG I squabble. Mean, Eric Bell, my bad. Eric yeah, Bell, E. Bell. Bell. Yeah, E. You know, Bell. You know what I mean? Right. Um, shit, uh, shit, you know. So, you know. so what about in our era, homie? Who was like the homie that had hands that would tip a homie up if a homie was out of line or something like that? Who was the homies in our era that that had hands that are pushing line with the homies in? And if a homie had, if we was out in the field and had to get down with some rips and traffic. Who was a homie that 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 would, would throw them things in our era? Shit, uh, if I was a you know, it's gonna be pops, you know what I mean? Right. Pop was like a motherfucker, tall, you know, lanky motherfucker, like Sugar Ray, uh, like a nigga, um, Hagler. Right. You know, you right. know Hagler, motherfucker Hearns. Right, you know what right. I mean, right. I mean, Hearns, one of them motherfuckers that's gonna stock you up real quick, you know. That nigga Ronnie Rue, that nigga just, you know, everybody know about Ronnie Rue in the county. On the streets, that motherfucker just uh, a, a nightmare. I, you know, half the motherfuckers that he, majority of motherfuckers he beat up, they already lost already for them and fought him because they must be scared and shit. Right, <laughs> you know right, right. Man? Messing with a Ronnie Rule name and all that. Yeah, the homie G Wack. You know, yeah. G Wack had hands. You know, even Rum had hands. Rum was kind of weird, motherfucker. Here, so back and watch karate and shit movies all day. Bruce Lee movies. You know, you, you know how rappers they watch a lot of movies and read a lot of books to put into a definition and. Get a more vision of how they want to rap and push. So that nigga would come with some uh, Jujutsu move and shit on your ass. You got what the fuck? Right, some shit. He didn't. He didn't study some shit. Huh? 
Yeah, that's what yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I say Red Rum, homie. I told on the story on the channel on 89 on up about Red Rum. A lot of dudes, you know, because the homie had went into more of the, like the song say, the Paru love and the blood love for the for the community, community and the culture. But back in the days, homie, when that song and stuff first came out, dudes was really getting cracking. And I told dudes, you know, I had asked the homie about the song and Rum was like, Shh, we can get it in. And and from there on, homie, me and Rum always had a <clears throat> hell of a bond relationship, homie, because you know we was we was all solid, holding each other accountable, and was really about our business back then, you know. Uh, now I want to ask you about uh the hard time hustlers, homie, the hard time hustler Crips, homie, because a lot of people say. Yeah. You know, it's it's ten four mafia, ten four abs, and I think a ten four hard time hustler crip. Am I correct? Yep, yep, exactly. So how did that, how did that go with y'all, man? Did y'all go to school with some of them hard time hustler dudes, or what, what was the bondage or, or the relationship before everything turned the way it was? So shit, basically, before I got put on the hood, you know, we had some homies that was banging, you know, like T-Cat, uh, K-Bone, Sick, like a lot of eight, a lot of eight, a little nine, a little click. They had a little click, you know, they was going at it with the hard times. So if I got put on the hood, that was like a hard beef that was, that was already there. You know what I mean? Right, right. So that, so that been going, so the homies did the homies, so the homies didn't go to school with them dudes, but they knew a few of them. Yeah, yeah. But you know, one thing on this side of town, if you just know about the schools, Washington High School and Morningside High School is like robbery. You know, Washington represent the Crips on that side and Morningside represent the blood. So, even going back to Tookie, he used to come to Inglewood and, and try to, you know, you know, my uncle, my uncle Wayne, he was the flyest motherfucker at Inglewood and, and I'm Morningside at 74, a pretty boy and shit. My grandma was with Mix. And um, he, had, he, he took a fight with Tookie. And, and my uncle um, David and shit took a fight with Tookie. They was coming to Inglewood always trying to punk everybody. My, and my mom was one of the first Inglewood families in 1974, mm. you know? And they formed families because it was a family to go against Tookie and our whole Rolling Honey, which would end up later on being the Rolling Hunters. So our war with them is ancient. It ain't really nothing new. It just upgraded and new, mother and new players. Right, so we forever been getting into it with them dudes off the history that you just explained. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So did do, do you do you know a couple rider dudes that was from Hard Time Hustler? Yeah, um, um, Baby Dirty. I, I, I think I just seen him do an interview too. I don't know what I just he just did a three part interview. I, I, I heard the whole thing, but Baby Dirty he was one of them. Right, you know, Joe. Um, it was a couple that three riders. He got killed each other in the car. I can't even think of their names. You know, the hard times at one time, it was one of the things, you know, they got eight, seven hard times on the east side. So, exactly. On the hard time hood, so they got little numbers and shit. You know what I mean? Right, right. So, what's the what's the borderline of you guys, homie? Should be right across the street. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we basically um, 20, 15 seconds away. And I left to walk across the street. So did it ever have times where y'all had a cool down period where y'all wasn't getting into it with them dudes and everybody just was on ice? Did y'all ever have times like that? Well, you know how it is in street warfare at that time. You know, you'll go out it for a couple of weeks and the police will step in and be sitting late night on the borders and you'll see them playing crossover because, you know, you might get caught up. You know what I mean? So the police always knew how to interfere and break up wars. And, you know, it it go slow down. You know, a couple of months, then it go for a couple of months. It might slow down for a month, month and a half, then it go. You know, right, so, right. The, the homies ever had some squabbles with them dudes? Um, in jail. In jail. In kind of jail, you know how it is. You mm -hmm. always go in jail. The times, you know, we don't hang in the same section. You know, they hang over there on Dinker and Western, and, and you know, I mean, they don't hang on Vermont. That's the Ubers over there, but. They hang in that really world hundred, you know, they can go from the nine old Jesse Owens to the hard times to the one elevens to a hundred to Holly Park on the hundred and twentieth and Van Ness, you know what I mean? Right. Back to 
arenas on back, so they got a little area where they can hang. So they be in that area, you know what I mean? Right, they don't right. Be in that area, so we don't really see each other like that. Right, they know? wasn't really that like that. that yeah, you know? right. But we in jail, you know what I mean? Well, we in close confinement. Then that's when we had altercations like that with them. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it was just tick for tack when something went up. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, right now, um, believe it or not, my barber, you know, his mom was my family, my, my family barber since I right. was five years old. Mm -hmm. So his mom was Nadine Barbershop. That was a hundred and ninth and Prairie. It was there for about twenty years, and they moved to, to Inglewood over there on um, over there in the Legends. Right there on, I think it was Fur and Century, right there in that shopping center. But he ended up being from 111th. Right. He ended up being a barber. So when she was cracking off, sometimes they'd come in the barber shop, like Baby Ant with the green eyes on 111, he'd come in here. You know, we didn't really say nothing. And um, sometimes, you know, I'll be up there and Mike, you know, hit me and be like, man, I, you, know, you know, some heavy hitters about to come up here. So you might come and get your hair cut tomorrow, a couple of hours from now, I'll hit you up. I mean, he was making money. I mean, he was making like $25, $30 a month together. So we went on break that bomb. You know what I mean? Exactly. So you appreciate that head and get up out the way. He came over there and shot dice with the homies. You know what I mean? Right. But he was 111. But since, you know, I, I was so ranked high in my hood, he just couldn't say shit. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. But um, eventually, you know, like I ran to Dick Ant. He, he, he told me, he's, you know, the morning side five, and he, you know, we played basketball. So, I see some of these dudes, but one of them that's older, and we really ain't tripping because you know, you know, we make, you know, we made mistakes, and the homies got killed, and we trying to do something different. So I ran to cats, and we chopped it up for a half second, and you know, thirty minute thing, like ooh, and we kept it mutual respect and kept it moving. So, so for for people that don't know, that's not from the city and just out of town viewers, uh. We didn't already told these dudes, you know, our hood, Inglewood Avenue, Paru, how close we are to the hard time hustler crips. We basically, if you walk outside your door and walk to the curb to get in your car, or, or I mean, basically, if you walk out your door and walk across the street to the, to the apartments across the way from you, that's how close we was to, to, to some enemies back in the days. Yeah, basically, and we yeah. was all the way down the street. Right. Then, the next, when you get to the hundred and eight, it's the one eleven. So, so right. So, tell us how close are we are to to the to the one elevens, Ace Deuce, if you can. Huh? Can you tell it? Can you tell everybody how close we are to the uh one elevens? Shit, the same shit. We go all the way down this twenty seconds. You know, you can walk. We can walk across the street and put in work. You know, the homies been and you know, I ain't gonna say what homies. I don't really allegedly, but allegedly some of the homies been over there on on bikes. On skateboards, walking, that's how close it was. Right, right. And I didn't heard about them dudes coming on, hitting us on bikes as well back in the days when we was coming up young, homie. So I just want to give a, the visual of, a, of the viewers that's not from here how close we was to one another in our illmatic, useful state of minds getting cracking on one another. We was right across the street sharing hamburger stands, food courts, and and all that. Am I correct, Ace Deuce? Yeah, 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 you're correct. You know what I mean? It's, it's you know, you correct, but like, you know, like I was saying, you know, they had their own thing. Like, they had the, you know, the Hunter, had the, um, Low Riders on, on uh, Western and uh, Imperial on Sundays. Then they had the bowling alley down the street. You know what I mean? But Inglewood, you know, Inglewood, we might be at Savoy or up at the Green Horse or, you know, of a Darby, you know, everybody had their hangouts, you know what I mean? So we didn't really bump into each other like that sometimes, you know what I mean? On top we bump, right. on, 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 you know, sometimes you had to come down the 108th to get the Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. so, we might, so, we, so we might spot them, you know what I mean? Try to, you know, push up on them, they come out with a strap or might, you know, whatever it is we're going to do at that time. But they kind of had to come through our hood to get the Crenshaw. Right. You know I mean? so they can go around. And go down Van Ness and hit 120th and hit the freeway, but you know, so you know how it is. They want to roll through and see if we hanging out. Right. They want to know where we hanging too. So you know how it is. I used to roll through, through there too and see what they you know, roll through. You know, I ain't trying to do nothing. But I'm just rolling. You know, right. And, for the home but day. yeah, yeah. So, and that's how we did it though back then. You know what I'm saying? They did it to us. Mm -hmm. Roll through, scout, and we exactly. rolled through and scouted 
at our young time, homie. And that's what I like about this history, that we can share it honestly. And, and it's something we all did, and we can get it up out of our system on how our culture was, homie. Uh, did did can did y'all ever have any like squabbles with the one elevens by you know dudes being kind of like close at times? Had the homies ever had good chunkers with them dudes you can recall? Yeah, I pretty know how it is. A lot of homies been had chunkers with the one elevens in the county. Like I never had no chunker with one elevens in the county. Yeah. I, I was you know I ain't gonna say I was making smart moves, but I was just unfortunately be able to stay out the system. You know what I mean? Right. But, but my first experience, I went to the um, county. I, I, I hit the, I think I was in um, front of 200, something, 5200. I go in there, you know, and he said, you know, it's like a mile to playing football. I'm at the door. Where you from? Where you from? I'm, you know, I'm from El Paro, so I, 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 I hit the, you know, my bump, make my bed up. I turn around, and it's about 10, 10 rolling hundreds. They're like, nigga, where you, where you say you was from? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm from Avenue. You know what I mean? Right. I think this nigga, um, Big Slim from, um, Watergate, you know, I, I actually the homies had killed his relative, you know what I mean? So he he come through the hood, mm -hmm. and, you know, the homies was having shootouts with him, you know what I mean? But I never seen him before. But then when he went to jail, I heard he was trying to squab up every homie, you know, avenue that came in here. Right. He was the first nigga, you know, him and Ronnie Rue, that's Ronnie Rue, had about four or five squads in there, you know what I mean? Right. And so and he, he had a squad with about six, seven. So I, I get up there and make a long story. I get in there, this nigga. Come to me like, and this nigga stuttered bad like the oh. I, 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 I need that. Man, this nigga had like twenty inch guns, my nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he told my nigga, <laughs> nigga super swole chest, nigga fight, nigga, nigga twenty inch, nigga. You know, but this nigga, I'm like, man, what? You know what I mean? Nigga, nigga heart drop. I, I nigga had the squad, you know. Nigga, right. Nigga, is it what it is? You know what I mean? Man, and that's my first time. That shit scared me. After I whooped his ass, you know what I mean? Right. That shit told me. Never fuck with nobody that, that's nervous that they might come out, you know, with that drilling it be different and you about to expect it. So I don't fuck with motherfuckers that <laughs> they ain't trying to be fucked right, with. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 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 I'm a he I'ma double back to the one e one elevens hmm. by them being so so close to his homie. Uh did did we ever have times where we just had cool periods? Where, where they ain't coming through and we ain't coming through, we just, you know, trying to just chill until something else come up. Has it been times like that where we had spells like that with them dudes over there? Nah, it was just always on. It, it was always on with them, always on with the hard times. But, you know, the homies at that time was growing up, you know, it was, you know, not to, uh, that, you know, but, but after the taxes of our homies, but at that time, you, if you if you didn't put in work in, in two months, nigga, you was getting beat up. And that's just how it was back then. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. everybody got to put in work. So, you know, if you went Monday, the next nigga went Wednesday, the next nigga went Friday, the homies went. So it was constantly, constantly. You so, know what I mean? Right, right. So that is, that just let the people know it was back and forth. Because I know, you know, I was hanging and, you know, was out there at that time. And the one elevens they wasn't letting up. And the one fifteens, they like you said, they all together. They wasn't letting up, and uh, you know what I'm saying. They wasn't letting up either. So that's what made us stay trying to go hard, man. Uh, so now I want to move into the the Watergate Crips, dog. Okay. What was the relationship with the homies from Al Pyro and the Watergates, homie? So um, you heard of Eldon Campbell? He played that morning side, played for the Lakers. So his whole family from Watergate, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, DJ Pooh that made um, uh, Fridays with, with Ice Cube, he from Watergate. Right. And even the, the guy, Devo, the character that they made, he from Watergate. That's a real story, but the dude was from Watergate. And um, they, you know, before, you know, they, a lot of their hood got destroyed when they made that uh, free right. Exactly. Even the IBC took a, a big chunk of their neighborhood. You know what I mean? So a lot of those dudes moved to Orange County and started Orange County water gates. I know a lot of people probably in jail that ran to Orange County water gate. So, uh, you know, they, 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 they had some riders, man. They, they used to come through and, and you know, bust an arm, you know, niggas go back. But they they, 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 they they came through. You know, I gave props to them, one eleven hard times. You know, everybody was doing their thing, you know what I mean? And, 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 you know, at the end of the day, nobody really won because niggas lost homies and 
right now, how fucked the situation is, I'll die for anything for my uncle to come back. I hate to see how the hood is, is and see how shit is around Inglewood and all the homies is gone for this shit. You know what I mean? But right. did, the, <clears throat> did the homies go to school with Watergates? No, I never went to school with Watergates. Yeah, yeah. Water, actually, that side of Inglewood is considered Hawthorne. So, you know, a lot of those dudes probably, you know, went to like Lou Zinger or some or, or, or Gardena High School, you know what I mean? Because they couldn't go to Morningside, they couldn't go to Inglewood, you know what I mean? So, so right. with the Watergate being so close, was it more activity with them than the hard times in the 111s at, 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 the, at the beginning times in the 90s? Now, we just have a little incidents and shit, you know. You know, they'll do their scout too. They'll come through, scout, see if we hanging out at the park and come through, you know, shit. They prep through some, they stay, prep through some yards one time. We was hanging at the little spot way in the park. It, shit, hopped the fence, you know, went through some houses and tried to get us from the fence. Shit, close, I'm um, close range, so everybody was doing their thing, you know what I mean? We really wasn't, no, you know, we had busters in the hood, but the niggas that were from each hood that were doing their shit, they were doing their shit. Right, <laughs> right. So, so them dudes, for viewers that don't know and people that ask me, so Watergate Crips, they used to be over there blued up and G'd up and banged out trying to be with the business. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, and they part of the Rolling Hunters. Right. Uh, but they had fell out and went to war with the Wayne Levers. So that's, and so they wind up being back by they self. Right. right. So what, so, so, so dudes want to know before I go into uh, the IVCs, dudes want to know which ones was the hoods that was banged out the most when niggas used to go through back in the days. Who used to catch blued up and crept out the most? What hood would you say be the crept out the most when we was young? Well, you know, from my side, it was the one eleven. You know what I mean? And, and the hard times. You know, just the road, just the, just the, you know, there was one, you know. For them to deal with the Hoovers, because the Hoovers were so big, and they had so many subsets, they had to come together as one. You know what I mean? They couldn't take on the Hoovers just by themselves. You know what I mean? Right. So they had to come together. So they hang together. You know what I mean? They always did. You know what I mean? So you see them hanging out on Western 108th, or, or they used to hang out at the church's chicken on the period mm -hmm. of Western. I remember or if they that. Hang out, I'm, I'm, I'm up with the day. You know what I mean? And probably just one hood. It's all those niggas like a mix. All of them just hanging. Right, because they part of that same car. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's some what's some hell of a name that used to be that that you could recall that was banged out like us around our age from from Watergate? Um, I, I didn't really know those dudes like right. that. You know, you know how it is at the time. Like I got put on the hood. Bruce Hardy bitch with them. Right, right. So we didn't really know so. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't really make too many friends. Yeah, That's what I tell to people too. That they went to school with us, you know. We just knew where niggas was hanging at, and we put, you know, what I mean, you know, what right, I mean? right. Up, what what was what was some of they streets over there? What was some of they streets over there, ain't right? dudes? Cause you name like two streets, them dudes hung on back in the days. Well, they um probably like Art Ave and uh, 112 or or 115th, you know. What I mean, the Water Jakes and the RBC, they was worst enemies, so. The Watergates really didn't have enough time to focus on us because they had to focus on the IBCs. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And the IBCs worst enemy was the center parks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With blood wires, but the IBCs and Watergates was going there so much, it kind of took away from that attention. Mm -hmm. But the center park made, made them weaker because they was killing each other. And then, you know, the parks doing their thing. And then, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, the, um, you know, you know, the homies and everybody doing their thing. So, but it was more of a Watergate IBC beat. That, that, that was like, you know, like that shit was real. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, you know, the water gates kill mental. You know what I mean? Uh, did we ever have some crips in our hood on that side that we had to combat and try to get them up out of there and kind of war with? Uh, you you recall any of that? Nah, nah, nah. I'm really scared to live on that side of Inglewood. I, I never really recall. You know, if anything, it was just inner inner beef with the homies or. Motherfucker can't serve on this block. Or, you know, they can't serve on this one way. Just the mafia one way. Just the avenue one way. We used to have little shit like that. Right. Shit. So we never you had know, no crips that lived in our hood over there in the house. No. 
Right. But you know, they did. You know, it's always Prince living in the hood. That's gonna. That's gonna yeah, let yeah, you know yeah. But from. we just never. You know, that might be from East Side, the thirties, or uh, or a little. You know, Long Beach. But they getting their car go. You know, do they right. in their hood? You know, they drink. Did they shit? You know, motherfuckers smart. Come home, park. We're all black. Go in the house. You know. You know how it go. You know what I mean? Uh. You no, know, I've been living in crip hood, and I know how to. Right, the, about, right the, the same way they do us, homie. You just get in and you get out. Uh, somebody asked about a big sick, homie. Oh man, big sick is that must be a big sick. You know, he he like a he, he big sick is motherfucker. Wait, just doing shit. He be in wait just the competitions and shit. But and the power rule banging on wax, you gonna always hear um big sick and and baby sick. You know, he was an instrumental. Dude, you know, the real gangster. His brother is is Mo from Mafia. You know what I mean? And like I said, when that shit jumped up with the Mafia, it, it, was, it was some shit with Sick and, you know, uh, with um, Sick and um, Lil Hawk and little shit like that mm. going on and shit. But he was, you know, Sick was the was a was the out was the outright leader of the Ten Night Al Paul Rose. You know what I mean? Right. At so. that time. At right. that time. Right. You know? right. 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 You know, working out, he, you know, he, he, he um, owns a um, business for weightlifting and and um, and doing um, doing exercises and shit. So he's make, he making a good living, and, he, and you know, he ain't, he ain't got potential for weightlifting. So right, you know, staying out the way. Right, right. So yeah, man. Shout out to the big homeboy that you know shit changed his uh, get down uh, advocate and and doing things for the community. And uh, I remember I was in the pen before, man. I was, I, the big homie was up there. I was trying to get to where he had had just missed him. But I knew that would have been a hell of a pleasure if I could have got with the homeboy. And I remember I told him that a few years ago we was functioning. I was like, man, yeah, I was trying to get to where you was at and all that, man. And uh, yeah, dog. Uh, so the IVCs, man. Tell us about them dudes, homie. Did the homies ever kind of have it out with them dudes at one point, or did we go to school with them dudes, or? So, you know, I had a little situation with them when I was younger because I, I was famous in the park before I got put on ass. So my first interaction with them, I was famous in the park. You know what I mean? So when I went to Monroe, you know, when I, by the time I got to Monroe in seventh and fifth and sixth grade, I was playing junior ab. By about seventh grade, I was playing in the park. It went no more junior strikes in the park. So the IBCs, a um, couple of IBCs, you know, I, I don't want to put their name on there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, you know, like the homie, uh, Vamp, you know, they couple yeah, of yeah, homies. Yeah, yeah. You know, they couple homies here and there. You know, homie, uh, Vance, a couple of homies. These are, these are my real homies now. So right, I, right, right. Out. Right. And they had a lot of heart to go to. To go, to go to Monroe knowing it was Crips and what, and what can happen because they was outnumbered like the whole school to, to five or eight where it was there you know and it got to the point and you know they can you know basically go there no more they had to go to you know another school you know and they're going to lose anger but Vamp he was a rider though Vamp used to do his thing you know what I mean and um I, I, I got a job in the eighth grade no seventh grade when I was with Cent um, Cent Park. It was a drive through dairy right there on Yukon and Imperial. You drive in and they bring it to you. I don't know if you've never been there. You mm -hmm. had a car wash right there in the exactly. hotel right there. Yeah. So I, I used to work there in seventh grade. So Muffin Muffin I V C used to come up there and, you know, um, you know, um, shit, terrorize and come up there with the strap. You know, it got to the point my uncles and them had to come up here while I was working and shit. This is for me to work eight hours to tell us coming up here. Just looking for, you know what I mean? So I ended up quitting and shit. And I had an incident where they got off on me and shit. I was with my girl. They had a liquor store right there on Imperial. Sent uh, on Imperial. And I don't know if that's Sam, but the Imperial. But I went in, forgot my shit. There was a nigga I went to school with. You know what I mean? Came out, got in the car, you know, niggas bust, shot my back window out. And, you know, niggas been had shootouts. And, but that was like in our young age. So as we got older, um, I went to the pen, like I told you, I met my boy Spank. Mm -hmm. Cell phone a couple of days and um he put four thousand dollars in my book. So when I got out of out, out the pen, he was out the pen. I was from nigga um L from IBC. You know, I was getting work from them, you know what I mean? They was giving me a good deal, always come through for me, was making money together and shit, and I had formed a bond with um L and Spanian. From then, you know, they ran IBC, so everything they say go. If they just get a pass, I get a pass over there, you know what I mean? Right. So, we became cool and it wasn't no avenue 
we'll probably won't have RBC grief or us going at each other. And then, um, even one time I was on the one way serving and shit, I see L from RBC pull up with two of my little homies in the hood. He's like, man, the little homies is about to get these niggas out to get them in the car. That nigga actually brought them back to me. So we have built a cool relationship. It's still cool to this day. Right. So at one time we did kind of fall out, but then due to, to the, the ties and how we move around and do our thing, we was able to kind of like make it kind of even where it wouldn't be so much static. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Uh, anything else you want to add to some to the history, Ace Deuce? I mean, you know, I don't know if there's any comments in the sections, but... Um... You know, um, um, a lot of my homies, you know, um, you know, from NHP, I've probably been probably like here to 50 front rows, man, a lot of homies and here and a lot of homies from Center Park, I didn't, you know, probably didn't name, from the hood, I probably didn't name, but everybody played a part with nobody bigger than, the, bigger, bigger than the program, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I want to shout out my nigga T-Rail over there in Mafia, that's a real one, uh, a lot of love for that nigga, my nigga O.D. You know what I mean? My nigga, um, my nigga, um, um, Gramps over there. Shit. My nigga, um, shit. I, I, my nigga Lil Nut over there. My nigga Lil Spider. I, I, I went to school with Spider on Banging on Wax. He got killed. You know what I mean? Right. My nigga, see, like, I know these niggas by name. We used to school with each other. We call each other by our names and shit. You know what I mean? So, right. What type of homie was Lil Spider from Mafia? Little spider, little, little, little spider still around. Big spider. I mean, big spider. Yeah, big spider. My bad. In the head over there in the sixties. Right. The one that was banging on wax. It was hard too, rapping. It'd have been hard if he was getting killed. Was he a banged out homie and shit? Uh man, spiders one of the fly drinks. It was. It was like you. Yeah, but yeah. Mafia. <laughs> on everything. <laughs> on everything. Yeah, yeah, me and me and the homie. Uh, we had them love. Hate relationships, you could say, homie. Some of the homies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I already know, you know. And then my nigga Big Moves, try to holler my nigga Big Moves out in DB and shit, man. My nigga Tay Tay, you know, little Tay Tay Rams. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, nigga, you know what I mean? So, I got, I, I, like I said, I grew up with those niggas. They just come to my game and support me, man. Man, Stice both, man. Like, I go over there, even though they know I'm from Ad, they still look at me like, you know, the basketball player nigga, this our nigga that played ball represented this out of Inglewood. So they're still a part of me. They, they still hold it. You know, many times, some of the mafia is they always invite the homies and show us uh, open arms, show us love, man. I just wanted to put that out there. That's right. That's right. Uh, On the part three, homie, when we close it out, uh, I'm going to get all the pictures you gave me and just show a lot of the homeboys because people ask about Big Spook, homie. What type of homie was... Big Spook from Al Pyro. Yeah, see, Big Spook and Lil Spook. And his family, them motherfuckers is crazy as fuck because they Jamaicans. <laughs> them motherfuckers, is, you know what I mean? So they had a temper, you know what I mean? Big Spook was, was always was always a motherfucker in jail, always fighting, always doing some shit, always going to jail. And the crazy thing about it is, uh, I put Big Spook on, you know, Big Spook, he, his parents was kind of strict. So they used to pick him up from high school. He couldn't even walk home in school. They used to be on his head. So, as, you know, when we do our shit, he used to sneak out the alley and hop in the car with it to go do our shit, bring him back. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, at my road, when he was in the eighth grade, man, the homies, Mac Tramp, a couple of us, I think it was Corey, a couple of us went up there and, and put him on. So, I gave him, this, I gave him my name when I was from Central Park Spook. So that's how he, he got his name Spook, because I called him, I gave him Spook. I, I got a lot of homies that name. Niggas don't know that. I got about 10 or 12 homies that name. You know, homies got that name for either bagging on them, how they look, or, or a situation. So a lot of shit just stuck. You know what I mean? So I gave him Spook, and that was his name. And the hom was the homie a rider? Somebody asked, was the homie a rider? Oh, uh, man, Spook is put in mad work, homie. You know what I mean? Spoke to his thing. You know, he ain't living right now, so I I can't say that he was a he was a, he was a rider. You know, you know, and he was a hustler. You know, she spoke taking cars, spook he shit whipped up work. You know what I mean? He had bought him some song, sold on work. You know what I mean? What and type of homie? What type of homie was he to a to the homies? Like you know, what type of love he would give to a homie? Oh uh, shit, you know. Um, spook, you know, the homies and shit, you know, just like any of the hood, he's gonna always, if he comes through, he's gonna make sure he bring a bottle, 
you know, it's gonna make sure, you know, if you need some change, you know, some change. Most importantly, if some, you know, happen with you in the streets, he he, he coming. If we if we need to go put in work or go sock somebody up, he wanna motherfuckers, he can always come. He gonna always come. He ain't gonna never never not come. You know what I mean? And like I said, he had a short temper because he was Jamaican and this, you know, he just made this, just made this change. You know, uh, you know, when I was out hustling, you know, when, you, you remember when I was hustling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, you know, that I was. I was making like 25, you know, 25,000 a month. You know what I mean? Like I had cars and low riders and shit. You know what I mean? Right. I remember. You remember that shit? I was serving the whole damn near Inglewood. You know, right. Double up and wicked and shit. And, you know, shout out to, to my nigga Lump too for family. Lump. Lump played a, a lot, you know, as far as getting me going. You know exactly. Know? So, um, um, yeah, man. I was touching that situation. And then, right. um, like the homie Spider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I took rally some family. That's my nigga. Mm-hmm. I just got so much history, man. A homie getting killed and homies this and homie getting killed in car accidents or homie by the overdose. You know what I mean? Like homie resting on PCB active. You know, right. To the park that died. You know, so I've been going to funerals and funerals. You know what I mean? It's just. W- what, like, about Lil Spook? Spook? Wow. what about Lil Spook? What about Lil Spook? So Lil Spook, you was Jamaican too. So Lil Spook, man. That's one of the stories, man. That when that, that, that's one of the stories that kind of fuck fuck me up, man. Little spook was a little pretty little brown skinned Bob Morgan looking nigga with green eyes and shit. All the girls liked, but he 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 was an asshole. He always stayed in jail, all, all always fighting, getting in trouble. You know what I mean? And um, a rider put in work, had hands, tall, broad shoulders and shit, long ass, lanky arms. Everybody in this era knew was scared of him at his ass breaking when nobody. Fucking with um, Lil Spook. Um, the day Lil Spook got killed was on my birthday at my house. Around, you know, well, it started at my house. So I was at my house on my birthday. The homies be over there about 30 deep, you know, and I went to go get some work. I was like, man, I was like, man, I had ran out. I was like, man, I didn't go get a, a zip from, you know, from, um, from, from, from the 30s. I was get my shit from the 30s because my cousin is an OG from, from Harlem. So I got plugged up with them. That's giving me some fire shit for, at, a, at a cold ticket. So I went up to get some work. Mm-hmm. You know, Spook was at my house. We all at my house. I come back. You know, my I was married at that time. I'm divorced now. But I asked my wife, I'm like, where the homies were? Like, I went to the store. They said they'd be right back. So next thing you know, the homies were in the, the homie H. Tram's car in the yard. He's like, blood. That homie little Spook just got shot in the head. <laughs> blood was shake to the hood. Blood on the 109th and um, Orange Ave over there. Boom, boom. Blood, the homie, you know, shot in the middle of the street. Blood, mama. Um, over blood crying and all the homies out there and shit, blood and uh, shit, body for about six, seven years, but I, I couldn't enjoy my birthday because it brought back too many memories of little spook. So I paid, you know what I mean? So what did the homies have? A, did, did they, what it was, a drive by or something? Nah, shit, the brother hunters came in two suburbans and hopped out, shit, six deep. The homies was hanging out like 17, 18 deep uh, across the street from Century Park, just. You know, slipping, not really paying attention. You know, he's coming to suburbs and hopped out, nigga, and started gunning. And Lil Spook was in his car and, and backed up. Instead of, you know, running, he backed up and, and hit a car and that shit ran up to the, um, you know, shit to the window. You know what I mean? Right, right. Man, I just want to say, man, homie, thank you for sharing that, that, that hell of a content and, you know, sharing the history about homies, man. And uh, before I say what I'm going to say, what type of person was Lil Spook to the hood and to the homies, dog. Shit, Lil Spook was important, you know, Lil Spook was over um, KP and um, Big Smiley that went to, to Inglewood, you know, Big Smiley is a, a G from the hood now, and KP was a, was, a, was, a, was, a, was a straight killer, you know what I mean, and they looked up to him, because he was that nigga at that time, kind of like uh, my little cousin G. Roach got killed, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. all the little niggas, Tony Ace and all the that the new generation though, and they looked it to him because he didn't want to bring them around. So Lil Spook was like the the YG leader of his era, of his little homies. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, uh shit, man. P. I. P. Lil Spook, man, and uh we just sharing history and like the homie BJ say, man, if we offend anybody, we apologize, homie, because this is just history. And I just wanted to say so many homies from the NHPs, because we the two Pyro Hoods in Inglewood, uh, the passing of both of the spooks was very impactful to us, homie, because we had personal, hands-on uh, love 
with the homies over there. Homie, you know, we drank together, we hung together, and that right there, homie, uh, caused a major uproar, homie. You know what I'm saying? It caused a major uproar with uh, them dudes getting at us and we getting at them dudes, man. Uh, yeah, man, I appreciate, I appreciate that hell of a, uh, that history. And uh, for part three, we gonna come through, we gonna just close out. I'm gonna have you uh, give me them pictures, a couple more pictures, then I'm gonna lay them out. And I'm gonna have you uh, tell us who a few of them guys is, man, like the Spooks and a couple different homeboys that we okay. lost to this, man. And uh, like I say, man, I appreciate you. I love you, dog. You already know, relative. Appreciate you coming on, sharing the history. And when we come back on the part three with the pictures, anything you miss, you welcome to uh, put it back out there, man. Uh, you want to say something else before we end it? Uh, no, I just want to say uh, thanks for whoever you know um, listen to the um, you know um, to the podcast. You know, supported um, my boy Pint and get this history of Inglewood. You know, and it's not like we on here trying to brag or. I, you know, I ain't nobody special, you know, it was something that I went through. So it's a story I'm telling her. And I was sitting there every day, you know, that's like if you lived in the shit and watch it, you lived in Compton, and certain people that lived in these neighborhoods and we saw this shit. And we you know, you know, we don't rap, so we can't rap and tell you the story, you know, so I can just tell you the story of, you know, cause these niggas are rapping about us. You know, they're rapping about me, they're rapping about Pine. Right, right. About Udo, right. You know what I mean? So we can't rap, so these niggas tell the stories of, of what's in the hood, and, but we lived it. We, we, we the ones went through this shit. And that's what these platforms are for, homie, and that's what's good about them because Crips and Bloods, we able to share the history that we, we can all relate to, homie, and we can get a little closure and can kind of show our maturity to talk about certain things. Because I know a lot of homies that's blood and our Crips that pass they don't want us to tell these stories of a body because maybe we can change somebody else's life of a youngster thinking about living this road because we can make it look good and fashionable. But they, like you say, Ace Deuce, we, we got a lot of obituaries and a lot of pain and hurt behind this lifestyle, man. Yeah. I, I, I got one more thing to say, too, man. You uh, know, go I ahead. Give out to the whole world of hundreds, the 111, the hardest harms. The, the, the Raymonds, the Watergate, you know, we grew up, you know, in the crack era and we kind of knew what the government was doing to us and we kind of, you know, made mistakes and we lived a lot. And I, I look at those dudes as kings, man. They ain't no more of a king than me. When I went to jail, I learned they ain't no different than us. We just grew up on different sides of town. We never really get to know each other, man. So I always made a promise as far as me changing my life that I'll never pick up a gun and aim at another black dude or cause harm to a black dude. I'm going to defend myself. If somebody brought harm to me, but I'm not bringing it to nobody. Now. I just want to apologize to any, anything that I, I, I called over there that might have caused somebody pain. I apologize, and I, I'm wrong. I made a mistake, and, you know what I mean? I, I just try to move on and stay out the way. Man, that's some G shit right there, and I hope some G Crips that's our age that's hitting the 50 mark, and uh, I hope they feel the same way, homie, because we the next. OGs, we the next part of the change, homie. You know, you got the homies that that's 60 some older homies or 58 or something. But homie, we the dudes with the voices that kept the hood of the young homies and the and the new breeze that came up. We the ones that kept them dudes respecting our elders and they sat 60 some 70s, 58, 55. We the dudes that kept the car recognizing our older senior homeboys, homie. So we got to make the change now. It's on us, homie. So all the G Damus that's our age and all the G Crips that's our age, homie, it's on us to set the stage, homie, and get more on the young homeboys and put more responsibility on them dudes to be on each other for their generation, man. Is that is that you you think that was well said, uh, Ace Deuce? Oh man, you hit on the point, like you said, man. We got much so much pain, we can't bring our homie back, and it's like, shh. you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I had to say, you know, 
we got kids, man. We don't, we don't, we don't, I don't want my kids to grow up like, like you know, like me or my right. homies. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure the Crips or anybody, the hustlers, the gangster, why, anybody from anywhere, don't want their kids to grow up in this shit. So why would we put a, a kid, maybe 13, 14, that fell through the cracks and make him do this shit? Right. What you made you? Like, what made you start no, banging no. Ace Deuce? Hello. What made you start banging Ace Deuce? Shit. Well, I, I start. But well, I'm the only child. I ain't, ain't got no brother or sister, so you know my mom and pops was all cracking. I grew up with my grandma. She was at work all day, so I was one of those kids that can go anywhere through the neighborhood and uh, come home at eight, at, you know, eight seven thirty before it got dark. So. You know, being in the parks and just being in a gangster rhythm and gangster neighborhood, it was easy for me to fall prey and to fall victim to um, peer pressure. And, and that was the only thing I say, you know, you know how it is right now. Like some niggas have never been out of California. They've been to Vegas, but they ain't been to the South. They ain't been out of state. So I was one of those niggas that never, and never been out there a circle of areas. So that's all I knew. And I looked up to everybody and I wanted to be there. Right. Uh, somebody said Baby Pack from 104 Hard Time Hustler Crip. You heard of that name before? Baby Pack? Yeah, Pack. The Packs. Um, shit, I, you know, I, I don't be, you know, I never heard of, of, of the Packs. You know what I mean? I just know it was 104 Hard Time. They had 103rd Hard Time. Right, you know I mean? right. Um, they had the East Side Hard Time. You know what I mean? That's all I knew about. You know, they wore green. You know, that's one thing about the hard time. They wore green. Right. One wore baby blue and, and navy and the blocks. You know, they wore the, the, the Boston, you know, the Boston Red Sox gear. You know what I mean? Everybody, you know, the NHPs had, had you know, the um, the Nebraska in. So everybody mm -hmm. had their own look. So you can spot a motherfucker because we knew the hats. We knew the, the looking. But, you know what I mean? And what hats the homies wore in the abs? Well, you know, we would wear angels hats. We wear angel hats and we would wear pirate hats. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, if you could tell the young, the young dudes and the young females something about this gang life, uh, what would you tell them, man, to detour them from this life, Ace Deuce, and try to have them on something different than us? What would you tell the young homegirls or a young homeboy that think he want to bang at 13 or 14 years old? What would you tell him? Should I, I first, you know, I, you know, I, you know, um, a lot of homies, that, you know, they hear about the pen, but they ain't never really to see it. So, what I would, I would tell a, a, a dude that's that's just kind of young, because you know, you know, I work for a couple of boots. You know, I work, you know, I mentioned over over six thousand, seven seven thousand kids, and I used to always tell kids that I didn't listen. That I was hard at it. If I was to listen to the people that really love me instead of being in the street and the homies that was hating on you, getting to the home with the homies and make a snake and trying to. Fuck your bitch can go to jail, all that funny shit. But my family was the ones that really loved me and people. And they always tell me, do I do that, do that? And I ain't listen. And I always tell kids, a hard head make a soft ass. So if you don't listen, you know, education is the, is the key to everything, man. You know what I mean? And, and, um, and um, I just try to inspire kids through history. You know, I love African-American history. You know, African history, I've been studying history for 15 years. I go hard on my Facebook and I... I also, when I was a teacher aide, I did a um, LA school district black history program for a whole week. So I really, you know, I passed out turkeys and watts, and I worked in watts for 12 years, and I worked in every project in watts. So I've been pouring and pouring and trying to reverse my soul, man, because I had so much bad karma. And if it was on no game, they ain't going to give you karma. You, can, you think you're going to be out killing people, you might get killed. You think you're going to be out killing, your kid might get killed in the future. You might end up homeless. Ain't nothing good coming out this shit. And you're gonna pay for what you're doing. Yeah, that's the coldest shit a motherfucker could say. It's what you said, homie. You know, and some of us, even though we'll be smiling and functioning, we still living in karma, homie. And and you got Crips living in karma, essays living in karma. And dudes of different ethnicities living in karma still are just now reaching our peak where we can climb out of karma, you know, from from the things we didn't been through, things we didn't experience. And uh that's a good thing about this channel too, homie, because we 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 can speak for ourselves and speak for homies that's not here no more. 
because we know they'll push for this change and be advocates for this change, homie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's crazy, dog. So, yeah, man, we'll be waiting on part three so we can, you know, show a lot of pictures from the homeboys, from the Al Pop rules, a lot of monumental homeboys and all that, man. And uh, I appreciate everybody that came out with us on this long audio uh, journey, man, uh, with us tonight, dog. Uh, with this 89 on up stuff, man, serving this G stuff and not that Yee stuff, man, with where the channel, where you know, we're going to bring content all the way to life over here, dog. Uh, appreciate you, Ace Deuce, man. Much love. And uh, I guess we'll be waiting on you tomorrow, possibly for uh, the close out with part three. Okay, man. I appreciate you um, no, having me, man. No, and uh, and uh, I appreciate it, man, because, you know, like you were seeing the face of the hood, like, you know, Dulo might be the face of the NHP, and Ron is the face, face of the, of the, of the of the abs and maybe right now as, as we speak, um, I forgot the homie name and shit, let over the CPF that was rapping and shit, but I was in the picture with Nipsey. Mm -hmm. Firebug. Yeah, Firebug, blood like the face of the CPF right now, blood, but it be niggas behind the scene that be this is most important, man. Niggas like me is important in Inglewood, but you know, a lot of shit, I ain't really a jail nigga like that, or you know, certain I don't fit that criteria nigga to really you know, know about me. I mean, I, niggas like, you know, shit, you know, like, I run to uh, anybody outside of Inglewood, the first two people that know is Dulo and Taco. But shit, I don't know about Pine, mm -hmm. Slim, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, Sam, right. you know what I mean? Fat, so there's so many important dudes in the hood, and right. you can't really get everybody to talk, but it's, it's cool when you can get to some of the real motherfuckers that was really on the sideline and was really in that shit doing it. Right, homie. And that's why I say it's a lot of unsung heroes from our generation, homie. That's just like how you just laid it down and just you just served us the history that'll let people know homies was up fully functioning in these different pockets inside the city, homie. And it was active homies outside of the billboard homies that, you know, was plastered around, homie, you know, because every hood got them. But like you said, it's a lot of us that was behind the scenes that was just important as the homies that was billboarded. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On everything, man. Uh, hey, dog, I appreciate you, H. Deuce. And, uh, man, we're going to lock peas tomorrow, possibly, and, uh, you know, pay homage to, a, to, to some of the homies that's falling and not here no more and show their pictures, man. Oh, man. That sounds good. That's a clean work. You're my nigga. All right, so I'll catch you tomorrow. Much love, man. Much love. P-Phone. Man, homie, uh, yeah, shout out to the homeboy, man. I felt like he did his thing, man, on part one and part two, man. I'm going to run through a couple comments, salute everybody that been, you know, that tapped in through here, man. Uh, Who we got up here? Evelyn. Uh, Demarion Bonds, uh, Muhammad Ali, good looking out, uh, Katrina, what it do, MGM, I guess they got timed out, who else up in here, uh, D Boston, much love, loved one, uh, who else, SS, what's up, loved one, uh, the sports star, what it do, uh, Psycho, what it do. I grew up on 126 in Vermont. Pimps up. What's happening with it, homie? Uh, who else up in here, man? Ammo Shock. Good looking. I appreciate you on everything. And uh, appreciate the loved ones that uh went through, homie, and donated to the channel to keep the content up and running, man, and keep it to where, where we can have some people come on and, and share their story where we can share with them, homie, whether we buy them a cup of coffee or lunch or whatever. It's all about sharing so we can keep the channels up and running, the content going and all that, man. I want to salute everybody. Thank everybody, dog. 89 on up. And we out.
And uh, I want to say much love to the homeboy BJ, uh, the homie doing his thing, you know, just chilling right now, uh, getting his uh, mind back on board to get ready to serve a gain of content to us. So the homie been just taking a break, relaxing, putting together a gain of content. So when he come back, he gonna go heavy for us. We out. BJ, stay strong, stay solid.